doors are open on the House of Wellness. Today we look into the toxic mirror of social media and why it's damaging you. We find out how to get that elusive perfect night's sleep and it's easier than you think. We learn what it really means to have anxiety and what you can do to treat it. There's a really good reason for all this aggression. And is it real or just a myth? We find out the truth behind your pregnancy glow. In fact, it is a real thing. Is it? It is. All that and much more coming your way today. So let's all get well, stay well, live well and look fabulous. Right here in the House of Wellness. Hello everybody, welcome back. It is great to have you with us on the show today. We're just chatting about this thing, the pregnancy glow that a woman yeah. has. A woman's skin changes when she's pregnant. You, my little favourite beach ball, are glowing. You're a glowy Zoe. Do you hear that? The beach ball and then the glow. This is what, I've got a bit of a myth. Mm -hmm. about this glow, that people are actually overwhelmed by the weight gain, but they don't want to say, oh, beach ball, which you do. They say, you're glowing. Mm. But I have one. Like Interesting that. theory. Mm. I mean, it was nice, that. It was a, it was a it bit was of a whack and then just a cuddle. It was gentle. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, also on the show, best known for capturing the heart of Tim Robards in the first season of TV's The Bachelor series. Joining us on the sofa today is the beautiful Anna Heinrich. And our favourite pharmacist is back with us. Mm -hmm. And he's here for you guys. Gerald Quigley will be answering all your calls and queries. Yep, can't wait to chat with the GQ. You can call us up. Uh, don't forget, too, you can find us everywhere on our fabulous website, The House of Wellness. .com.au. Gerald is there. You can email him directly with questions as well. Do you know what I love on there? The recipes. And oh, yeah. Sally Obermeter has a great amount of recipes on there. So if you could come over and cook them for me, that would be great. <laughs> you can also call us on 1800 469 788. And of course, you can follow us on Facebook. Something mm -hmm. like 2 million views in the what? last month for all our little videos. So there you go. Uh, that makes of you great feel tips. better when you don't get any views on your personal one, right? <laughs> True. <laughs> now, down to serious business. And getting a good night's sleep can be harder than you think in this day and age. And without sufficient sleep, of course, we all know the outcomes. Not one of them is great. Mm, that's right. Lack of sleep obviously makes us tired and grumpy, but it can also affect our health. I'm heading into being a mum for the first time, and I know these days of good sleep are numbered. So to chat to us about this. Yeah. You'll be fine. <gasps> Praise the Lord. You'll be fine. I mean... Doctor, yeah. My baby didn't sleep through the night till it was 13 months, but you'll be fine. Um, oh. Let's get you the perfect night's sleep. It's lovely to welcome back our uh, sleep medicine expert, Dr. Mark Levi. Hello again. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Zoe. The I nurse. put my pillow. Yeah, you did. Oh, good to have a little nap. Well, sleep hygiene, sleep, very still, oh. peaceful segment we've got here. It's harder than we think, yeah. and it's harder than it should be to get a good night's sleep. What's going on in our lives? Is it food, drink, what are we doing wrong? Let's do step one. Okay. Bedroom's meant to be a place for sleep and intimacy. Mm -hmm. oh. So that means we're not meant to be working, we're not meant to be playing with our laptop, we're not meant to be doing all those distracting things, okay? And there's, I've got big three. The Tell big me. three I've got is light. Dim the lights. That kicks in all that melatonin that, that uh, will we'll say to the body, start sleeping, body, it's time yeah. to sleep. Yeah. And that means don't, you know, don't turn on the TV, turn the TV on two hours beforehand because all that blue light will, will retard the melatonin. Uh -huh. And so that'll, 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 that's the opposite. Number two is noise. Zoe, did you know if your Instagram, I'm going to hit you for a sec, if your Instagram's going all night... Ding, ding. Did you know that your brain, you're asleep, sleep. Did you know your brain registers that all yeah, night? Right. That's Distur right. Disturbs your brain, disturbs yes. your sleep all night. And the third thing is, 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 is cool temperature because the body cools down when you go to sleep. Oh, okay, so what can you suggest for us to unwind? Because that's usually the Instagram and the TV for me. So <laughs> if I can't do that, what do I do? Look, there's two, there's two issues here, really. And I like to always say to a patient, what are you shoving in your mouth before you go to sleep? Lots. Mm. <laughs> so, so the question is, if, you, if you're shoving in lots, can you please shove in lots a couple of hours before Oof, bedtime okay. so the digestive system can work magic? And, and so, because digestion takes a lot of energy and time and effort, and you don't want to disturb your sleep. Right. And number two is, oh, my favourite pet hobby, hate. 
alcohol, and then you've got caffeine, Chocolate. and then you've got sugar. Yeah. Okay, and they are stimulants. Now, they're great at the right time of day, but if you're going to go to sleep, did you know that caffeine's got a half-life of seven hours? So that means it's still in your body seven hours later. Okay. So they're the, they're the stimulants you want to avoid before Perfect. sleep to calm you down at night. All right. Now, as our resident sleep expert, do you walk around with a pillow all day, <laughs> usually? Well, uh, I, no, I don't have a clever answer for that, but a good <laughs> pillow will help you sleep as well. And that yeah. brings us to the bedroom. Yeah. Because, you know, Zoe, you must, you, you're a girl, there must be lots of lady listeners here. You go to the beauty spa or the day spa, whatever they're called so now. Ed, yes. Oh, Ed goes too, yay team. And so the question is, you want your bedroom to be that whole zen thing. You want a routine, you want a ritual. The body loves a ritual, just loves a ritual. And so the body loves getting up at the same time, going to bed the same time. The body loves it. your, zooca your natural body clock, the circadian rhythm, yep. mm -hmm. loves that body clock. And so before you go to bed, you want to have that zen bedroom and you want pre, you want a ritual. So maybe it's a warm, warm glass of milk, maybe it's a bath, maybe it's, re I always fall asleep reading Zoe in bed. Maybe it's reading. Yeah, reading, great. And, mm -hmm. and, and anything that'll just calm you, don't go for a run, Ed, Ed no. don't go for a paddle two hours before. Exactly. Done deal. All right, great tips for our sleep deprived uh, <laughs> viewers today. Quick points. Quick, Quick points. points. Get rid of the mobile phone in your bedroom. Yeah. Routine, routine, routine. And the third thing, of course, is a zen bedroom. Done. Thank you so much, Dr. Mark Levi. I am feeling zen. Portable pillow, optional. Thank you. So, <laughs> getting a good night's sleep is vital for every part of our lives, as we've just heard. But for some people, there is one condition working against that. That is true. Now, mm. over three million of us in Australia suffer from anxiety and depression, and those people often feel restlessness and fear. Yeah. Now, if you or anyone else you know does get anxious, get those feelings that you can't control, this is an important story for all of us to watch. We sent Zoe Bingley Pullen in search of treatment that can help our anxiety. Sometimes life can feel like it's all happening at once. The pace of life is relentless. The cost of living, powering, a job to demand overtime, our families need us. Sometimes life can feel like it's just too much to handle. There's a really good reason for all this aggression. And I promise I'll explain myself soon. A racing heart, sweating, uncontrollable thoughts, confusion, fear of an impending doom that won't go away. These are the symptoms of anxiety. Anxiety is the most common mental health condition suffered by Australians. Yet, as a society, we're really only just starting to talk about it. Life can be a funny thing. If you had diabetes, you'd naturally go and see a doctor. But unfortunately, when it comes to mental health, there's a big stigma around getting help. I'm someone who has grown up with a mother with depression. I've experienced anxiety and depression myself. And as a teenager, I didn't really know what to do. Anxiety disorders can be hard to diagnose. So knowing when to get help and where to get help is really important. Georgie Harmon is from Beyond Blue, an organisation dedicated to helping people understand their anxiety and other mental health conditions. A lot of people think that, you know, they've just got to battle on through it. We know that one in six people with anxiety conditions do not seek help for six years or more. Mm -hmm. So you're living with this really debilitating illness. Um, and just thinking it's just you when it's actually anxiety talking. I'm taking an exam, um, running a big race, you know, uh, these are things that, that cause us stress and worry. But it's when those events pass and those thoughts of worry don't subside um, and they last for weeks and weeks and weeks, that's when we say go and talk to your GP, tell your partner, tell your friends, go and get some help. Anxiety is diagnosed when normal anxious feelings begin to occur with inappropriate intensity and regularity. There are actually many different types of anxiety and each one has its own treatment. Hayley Venables was diagnosed with generalised anxiety disorder when she was 23 years old. 
when you feel anxious, it's a very, very lonely feeling because mm. you don't want to burden anybody else. I've missed a lot of milestones with my friends, um, you know, their first children, um, birthdays, big events in their lives because I couldn't bring myself to attend an event with a, lo a lot of people in an uncertain situation where I didn't necessarily know the place or the other people there. Um, that was too hard for me and I couldn't really manage to, to get there. And so I've missed a lot of things in my life. There is no one cure for anxiety, but a family history of mental health problems can contribute. Also, personality factors like perfectionism or extreme stress, or even traumatic events can bring it on. In my young adult life, definitely leading into my diagnosis, um, I experienced the loss of a really good friend, and I was going through quite, um, quite a heavy stage of grief in my life, and that was really the big trigger for, um, for all of my symptoms to come to a head. Effective treatments for anxiety include lifestyle changes such as regular exercise and reducing stress, counselling, including cognitive behavioural therapy which helps change your thinking patterns, online or e-therapy programs and in some cases medication. Um, for me, in terms of my management, the biggest thing in my toolkit is staying physically well. I find that when I'm physically healthy, my mental health is much better. Exercise is by far the most popular remedy for anxiety there is but I'm about to meet some people that have some very different ideas on stress relief. But it's the best method to be happy. Stop wishing for yourself to be happy. Coming up next, Zoe Bingley Pullen experiences a de-stress technique like no other. It just feels good to let it all out. We look into why social media could be ruining your self-esteem and relationship. And joining us on the sofa later, Bachelor winner Anna Heinrich shares her beauty secrets behind that great smile. That and so much more right after the break. Did you know that anxiety is the most common mental health condition suffered in Australia? With over three and a half million Aussies affected by it. And experts all agree, if you're experiencing consistent anxiety, you need to seek help. If you look at the statistics, one in four young people are suffering from, from some form of mental health issues, but I guess what's even more scary about that, only 20 to 30% of those young people are getting support. Most schools these days have a, have a counsellor. You can go to your local GP um, and get on a, uh, a mental health care plan. They'll do an assessment. So if you, if you reach the crisis point and you feel like there's no one else to talk to, there's, uh, there's helplines like Lifeline or Kids Helpline as well. But once you've been diagnosed, what then? So I started experiencing anxiety when I was in year 12 in high school and that's when I started going to therapy once a week. I just talked for an hour solid about everything that was on my mind, you know, everything that I'd been through up until that point. And it really, it really made a difference. When it comes to anxiety, there's lots of treatments. Some will work for some people and some not for others. For me, the thing that's worked throughout my lifestyle is meditation. I find it's a technique I can easily interweave into my lifestyle and has a very positive effect on anxiety and depression. This is Gen Dorning, and he shares modern Buddhist techniques at Kendamba Meditation Centre in Melbourne CBD. His lunchtime classes run all week, and after 14 years as a meditating monk, he believes the best way to find peace in life is peace of mind. Well, anxiety is an instance of a turbulent state of mind. If we are able to make our mind peaceful, we can derive happiness from, from our life. We spend our life at the extreme of trying to find happiness and freedom by manipulating the external world. So we go off to the homeware store we buy a new sofa and we think that's going to solve all our human problems and, and make us happy. And we spend our life doing that. Now, to go from that extreme to becoming more of an inner being, somebody who's developing a peaceful mind and finding a lot more happiness within, it's a little bit of a journey. And that's why a class is very helpful. I, I feel I'm on a real high, actually, for the rest of the afternoon. And... Um especially after I've um, had a very stressful time. Come to meditation during the day, go back and I just handle it, all just falls into place. Now, if you're not into the Zen meditation thing, then there's another kind of therapy you can try, which brings us right back to where this all started. Oh, 
So now it might make sense why we started here at the break room, but for so many anxiety sufferers, it just feels good to let it all out. This is the break room, a place where you can smash stuff with a great big bat and feel better for it. Ed Hunter owns this place. <laughs> so we get folks that are just looking for, like, the adrenaline, they're looking for that good time on a Friday night. We get folks that are actually using this as a genuine form of therapy, which is beautiful. Exercise is nature's anti-anxiety remedy. It clears the mind and fires up the endorphins, which are the feel-good hormones. In fact, researchers have found that after approximately five minutes of aerobic exercise, we begin to feel the anti-anxiety effects. So these are people that are going through a bereavement or, you know, a very stressful time at work or a very traumatic breakup. Anything that's kind of, you know, giving, really grinding their gears or causing them a bit of anxiety. So it's, it's all about that release because that way you can acknowledge it, deal with it and then move on with your life. When I experienced anxiety, it was something that was completely overwhelming. But what today's reminded me of is that when you seek help, you apply meditation to your day-to-day -day life and even smash some bowls, it will help set you off and send you down the path of a healthy recovery. Great story, Zoe. You and I are mm. not alone in this. Some three and a half million Aussies will suffer from anxiety, but going so long, six years plus without sort of addressing it, is crazy to suffer in silence, isn't it's, it? It's a really high statistic and worrying as well. There's some amazing outlets. You go to the Beyond Blue website and you can actually follow questionnaires and really isolate whether or not you do have anxiety. Sometimes it can be the small things. It's not necessarily a full uh, anxiety attack. It mm. might be just simply agoraphobia. Uh, increase of heart rate in areas, but more than what it should be is something that you should be looking into. And a bit of a sweeping statement, but women tend to discuss it more with their friends and girlfriends, whereas we men bottle it up, right? Mm. Um, what is a, a good sign that you might be suffering from anxiety? Lack of sleep, obviously, one. Yeah, definitely. I think the number one thing is to acknowledge what's going on in your life. Like I said before, stress and anxiety, they, they have very similar symptoms. Yeah. We obviously have an increase of different neurochemicals through that period of time. It's when something is on going and out of the norm as well. So I think it is acknowledging it, putting the right support network around you, and you'll be amazed. Once you start talking about and open this dialogue, how many people have either been in that situation and they might have some very useful and uh, maybe even some out of the blue tools that might yeah. actually help you? I think everyone deserves to go to a smashing room <laughs> like that. Does, doesn't that look the best fun? I mean, could we just do it now? Could we go to our... <laughs> parents place and smash up their crockery. Look, it's a really cathartic moment. I loved it. I was a bit nervous getting into it, but it does go to show how I think in a lot of our lives we're, we're very introspective. We're not using physicality as a tool to really let it go. I mean, I'm a big believer in exercise. We know that obviously that can increase those neurochemicals faster than pretty much anything, but I'm all for something a little different like a smashing room. Even as a chef, Hold having <laughs> all, all your pots and crockery busted. Uh, not my good ones. Good story. Well done. Thanks Thank for you. that. Zoe. In this high-tech age, social media has become a primary gateway to connect with friends and the world around us, and that is incredibly useful. The problem is when we look at social media, we end up comparing ourselves with what we find out there, and that can be damaging to our self-esteem and our relationships. Here to make sure this doesn't happen to you is intimacy and relationship expert, Dr. Nikki Goldstein. You look a little different today. <laughs> Just a little. You Just look beautiful. You have decided to Thank go makeup free. Yes. It's a bold choice to go on TV like that. Tell me why. Well, I feel like there's so much pressure on women to be perfect. And when you do work in the media, you know, we're very done up. And I love getting dressed up. You know, I've always been a girl that's into hair and makeup. Mm. But now we do have social media and we're seeing this idea of perfection on TV and in social media. And that's this example that we're leading to other women to look like. So I wanted to make a statement to be able to say, you know, this is what a real woman looks like. This is what I look like when I walk out the door and I'm going to meet my friends for coffee or I'm going to do an errand. And I'm okay with that. Yes, I yeah. will go back to hair and makeup next time, but I just feel like we need to start putting out those real messages to women about what self-confidence is, what beauty is, and what perfection is as well. You look absolutely beautiful without makeup. I'm not sure if we'll all be <laughs> that blessed. But what should we be asking ourselves if we're trying to keep up this picture perfect image? I think the most important question is what is perfect? Mm. And where do you get that expectation from? Are you watching reality TV? Because reality TV isn't reality. You know, it is 
a falsified format. You know, is that what you think that you should look like? Are you looking at the Kardashians? Are you yeah. looking at people on social media and thinking, why don't I look like that? So you need to challenge yourself. What's perfect? Is that the damaging part, the comparison on social media? Is that where we... I think it's a big part of it. I feel like as women we've always had messages telling us that True. we're not good enough and we could be better. But now we have those messages that are fed to us at a fast pace. And but all we also day. Yeah, yeah. You, you're on your phone and you see you know, even advertising, you mm -hmm. know, and you think, oh, if I use that cream I'm gonna look exactly like her. Yeah. You know, there's so much to tell us that we need to improve ourselves, but we also have the level of comparison. And now with apps and filters and all those things, you can make yourself skinnier, you can make yourself blemish free. You don't have free. to wear makeup, just go on a filter <laughs> and just <laughs> filter it. Don't leave the house. Absolutely. And how can this damage our relationships? Well, I feel like when we're suffering from a lowered self-esteem, we tend to take it out on our partner. Or we tend to also perceive things that are going on that aren't necessarily there. We might be thinking, oh, are they talking to that person? I'm not good enough. So, of course, right. they would be off with someone else. We might be acting out. We might be you know, starting arguments because we don't feel good in our own skin. So, I think it's really important that if you are struggling or even if you're just having a moment where you don't feel okay about yourself, put your hand up and say to the person that you're in a relationship with, you know what, honey, I'm not feeling that great about myself tonight. Not in a pity party way. Not like yeah. you're looking for those compliments of, oh, Oh, darling you're beautiful just to give you a bit of a break but maybe also to help you have those conversations around why don't you feel beautiful why don't you feel okay and where are those messages coming from I know for me I had to go through all of my social media and unfollow a lot of people that were triggering thoughts of comparison or self-esteem do you think that we need more boundaries around what we flood our feeds with I think it's about awareness mm -hmm. because if you're aware that that is what's impacting you then I think it's a great thing to go through social media and have a look at how does that person make me feel but even extend that to the TV shows that you're watching yes. the magazines that you're reading you know how do they make you feel as a person and does it give you a negative message if it does maybe it's worthwhile to have a look at something that makes you feel better about yourself is there some form of media whether it's social or traditional that you actually feel empowered as a woman and you feel stronger mm. instead of feeling left with that oh I'm Ugh. not good enough yeah can you give us some takeaway tips on how we can manage this well, I think first of all surround yourself by up uplifting people and that's also with social media but mm. also with friends you know people that make you feel better about yourself don't be with those people that leave you feeling you know down and out and a bit icky I also think you've got to challenge where your expectations come from you know what expectations are you placing on yourself because yeah. we can be our own worst enemy and then I think it's really important do something that makes you feel good yeah it could be something really little I love getting my nails done you know I do love getting a blowout and something as little as that when I'm having a bad day can then transform into other ways and I go okay it's just that little pep that I need to start giving myself that self-talk of you're okay. self love. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much Nikki. Thank you for having me. You are making me feel like I should just take this all off and rock the rest of the day with and it. And you would just look as beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Comparison is the thief of joy. After the break. We'll be joined by our charming pharmacist Gerald Quigley. He's here to answer your calls. Later, it's all about the baby that's coming and the best place for the birth. The midwives do lots of baby catching. All that and so much more. We'll see you here after the break. OK, ladies, it's that time again when we roll out the most comfortable chair on TV, then give you the floor. And thanks to our friends at Beebox, the makers of fun, functional baby essentials, it's all about the baby that's coming. Every week, we seek out a well-deserving mother-to-be and give her a great big comfy chair to rest in, a soothing foot massage from our Rob, and a chance to ask our panel of pregnancy experts for a little good advice. We were trying, um, but we just didn't know whether it would happen or not because I'm 40 years old, so I just, we thought, well, we'll see. We'll see if I can fall pregnant, and, and I did. <laughs> so. This is Janine and Ronan. They've decided now is the perfect time to change jobs and buy a new house, so money is tight, and they can't afford a private hospital for the birth. We've chosen to go through the public system um, for the birth of our baby. And one thing that I'm not particularly clear on is what we can and can't expect 
um, to be accommodated being that we are in the public system. So we are learning about water births, um, active birthing. I'm not really sure on what public hospitals will and won't accommodate on the day. This common misconception that in fact in the public system you have less choice. Actually in the public system you have much more choice. There are many private hospitals you are not allowed to have a water birth whereas that's now very common within the public sector. Within the public system you know you can choose uh, midwives who you know, you can choose a birth centre, you can choose GP shared care. There are many many different choices so I would actually not look at it as though you've made a second class choice but actually you've probably made the best choice. Every um, public hospital is actually different in what it provides. So if you're hoping to have a water birth, it's really important that you go in and you ask your own hospital if they can provide that for you. And some will have blow up pools that you'll be able to labour in. Some will allow you to birth in as well. But again, it's dependent upon your caregivers and what's available there. Talk to your midwives about what's important for you and what you would like. My daughter had a beautiful water birth at a public hospital. And I think um, one of the lovely things about a public hospital is that the midwives do lots of baby catching. So you've got some very experienced people helping you there. So you can have a great birth. And it's coming in 13 weeks. That's 90 days, Zoe. Gerald's back. All will be fine. <laughs> It will be fine, Gerald. Now, this is a big question yes, for sorry. expectant parents, yes. where to have the baby. Mm. People often ask you about planning for the birth. What do you say? Uh, look, and it's a very much an individual thing, and, and I'm not a, a hospital expert, but you go where you're comfortable and you're happy and you just feel a bit of engagement with the whole mm. thing. And I'm sure that's on your radar already. Yeah, it's on my list of things to do. 90 days. 90 days to be here in a flash. Now, it's time for your calls. Our favourite part of the show, 1800 469 788. We have Charlotte standing by. Our first caller today in Melbourne. Hello. What I want to know is what will help me stop getting migraines? Well, yeah, we touched on that in previous shows, didn't we? We do. And it's so common. And we've been talking anxiety and tension and mm. things today. And the classic mineral is magnesium. Surprise, surprise. Yes. But there is a herb called feverfew, which has got some clinical evidence showing it's a great preventer. So if migraines are part of your life, mm. have a look at feverfew, get some advice from your practitioner and try and identify the triggers and avoid them. Yep. Good luck with that, Charlotte. We feel your pain. They're terrible things. Uh, next caller, Angela, standing by in East Gippsland in Victoria. Hey, Angela. Just want to know, how will having surgery on my sinuses assist me? Um, I get sinusitis all the time and it would be really great to find out pros and cons about having surgery. Mm. And, and post-surgery, painful too, obviously. And it's not fun. No. Mm. So, Angela, what you do is you get some advice from your GP and your the surgeon who's going to be the innocent throat guy who's going to be doing it for you. And a, a good question to ask the GP is, if you were me, what would you be doing? Because it doesn't always work. But if it's the last option you've got, you've got to look at it. So yeah. it's all about discussions, risks, benefits, discomfort, after surgery, recovery, all of those things. Right. Now, just following up on that anxiety story yes. we saw earlier, any kind of supplements that can help reduce anxiety? And there's lots, okay. Zoe. And, and it was a great story. Yeah. But from a supplement perspective, there, this is classic complementary medicine, natural medicine therapy, because there's a lot of relaxing type herbs. Combinations of hops and valerian, chamomile, passion flower. These herbs are around, they don't come with any adverse effects and they do tend to calm you down. Mm. But the whole thing, as we've learned, engage, talk, acknowledge and just get the team behind you. Sure. Great advice. Really great advice. Yep. Now, as you guys know, this week I launched an awareness campaign around domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I was a victim and I really want to help others who are in crisis. I don't know if you know this, but one Australian woman dies every week at the hands of her partner. So we've created a line of T-shirts for women with really strong slogans such as don't touch me, ruled by none and I'm not your rival, created to start conversations and raise some funds for women in need. $5 from every T-shirt goes to Share the Dignity, a charity supporting women and girls facing domestic violence. This is a super important message from me personally, so please, if you can, get behind this and support it. 
all this great work um, that Share the Dignity does. It's incredible. You can check them out at sharethedignity.com.au. You can purchase your T-shirt from dish.com.au. Great organisation. Good on you for that. Sharethedignity.com.au is the number. We've always got your back. You know no, that you too. Do. Thanks, guys. Now, this next initiative is pretty groundbreaking. Have a look at this. X's Project Wing and Chemist Warehouse have recently joined forces to test a home delivery service via drone. Oh, yeah. Over three months, tester families within the area of Royala, a semi-rural town near Canberra, that's a 40-minute round trip by car from the nearest shop, will be able to purchase from over 100 products provided by Chemist Warehouse using the Project Wing app mm. and have these items delivered to their doorstep by a drone in only a few minutes. Who's got the job of flying the thing? I want that job. 40 minutes flying each... Oh, awesome. Now, something for you to celebrate Goat Soap's recent Product of the Year award. We've got 10 Goat Soap hampers to give away. Inside you'll find goodies such as the Goat Soap Kids Wash, there's moisturising lotion and bath oil, wipes, lip balms, even some of their original soap bars as well, and a whole stack more. Now, you've got to stop going into these competitions, then you're not going to win. I like goats. They're not for you. <laughs> to enter, head on over to our Facebook page at the House of Wellness, Oz, for all the details. Make sure you stay with us. We have plenty more to come. On the A to Z of vitamins, we have a shortcut to detox. Stick around for that. And after the break, it's all about pampering for the perfect pregnancy glow. It's really important that you're nourishing your skin with something that's healthy. We'll see you back here after the break. You look wonderful. You're glowing. It's a phrase every pregnant woman hears at some point. But what does glowing actually mean? As you know, I am well on my way through this pregnancy and I feel fantastic most of the time. But, you know, people are always telling me how amazing I look and I don't know if they're just trying to say that to make me feel better. So I'm on a mission to find out whether or not this is fact or fiction. Let's find out. Does pregnancy glow really exist? With many physical changes happening during pregnancy, it does leave you in awe of what the human body is capable of doing. So maybe we pregnant women really do glow. But if the pregnancy glow is anything more than just a myth, then I'd think Joseph Hykik, a leading aesthetic physician who works with people's skin every single day, is just the person to ask. Dr Joseph, tell me, is this supposed pregnancy glow real? In fact, it is a real thing. Is it? It is. Because you see what happens, during the pregnancy, your hormone increases. But not only this, your body produces more blood. And as a result of this, you will get this beautiful glow to your skin. If you think about it, if you feed the skin better, the skin will improve in quality. And because you're making more blood, uh, you're actually feeding the skin much more. I mean, you make 50% more blood while you're pregnant. Because yes. there's two of you that you're looking after, <laughs> not just one, of course. So our skin really does shine when we are expecting. But it's not all radiance and golden glows. In fact, a woman's skin undergoes incredible stress and changes during her pregnancy. There are stretch marks, discoloration, broken veins, chafing, itchy skin, and even acne. So it begs the question, what can we do about all that? product that people should avoid whilst they're pregnant, uh, vitamin A, whether or not it's natural or a, a, a chemical vitamin A, you uh -huh. should really avoid it. And the other product is salicylic acid or aspirin. Both vitamin A and salicylic acid have been proven that if you take them orally, they do cause some um, genetic malformation with the baby. So uh. that's when we take them orally. Now, topically, we're not 100% certain they're actually not safe. But because we have the proof that if you take them orally, we kind of extrapolate yes. that information to also applying it topically and trying to avoid it. We're, okay. we're playing it safe. This leaves women in a difficult spot because even if you love your morning skincare regime, if you read any pregnancy article, a lot of skincare products have active ingredients that can potentially be absorbed into the bloodstream, impacting our little newcomers. So it's really important to source skincare products that have safe ingredients. My friend Mandy is seven months pregnant and her skin, just like mine, is a daily challenge for her. I'm really um, dealing with itchy skin. The stretching. Yeah, the stretch. Is that yeah. happening for you? Um, at the beginning, I had almost hives all over. First really? Time said, yeah. When Mandy needs a little pampering, she recommends this place. Come on, you. 
Bump Day Spa specialises in pregnancy massage. Kerry and Tegan set up this spa with girls like us in mind. So ladies, tell me what is the difference with Bump Day Spa? So Bump Day Spa is a day spa that specialises in pre and postnatal treatments. Mm -hmm. um, all the products we use are organic and all our staff are qualified in pregnancy and postnatal massage. And we believe it's really important to nourish your skin. Obviously your hormones are changed a lot through pregnancy yeah. and we actually take on 60% of any toxins within our bloodstream. So it's really wow. yeah, so it's really important that you're nourishing your skin with something that's healthy and it also helps with the wellness of you pre and post, right. especially if you're breastfeeding. And a lot of women now work up to like the very end of their final trimester. So um, we feel like it's really important for the women to take some time for their own well-being, for them to stop and feel um, to to feel good about themselves, but also to reconnect and feel bonded with a baby. Because a happy mum means a happy bub. I'm feeling pretty connected right now, and I think I found the answer I was searching for. So, the pregnancy glow is real. With over 50% extra blood in our bodies and those raging hormones, taking care of our skin is essential. Now, I know it looks like this is a luxury, but it's actually a necessity. Wait till I tell Benji. <laughs> I can definitely get used to this. Are you kidding me? You're a human glow stick. Yeah, well, it's actually a fact now, so I have to just thank people for saying that rather than think that they're referring to me as chubby. Do you stand by that theory? Yeah. No, it's, it's a fact. Good. No, I okay. believe good, it. Good, I good, good. believe it. All right. Great story. Now, don't forget, every Sunday you can hear us on the radio each morning around the country with Larry Emder, Gerald Quigley and the rest of the team on the House of Wellness. We play out to 2GB in Sydney, 3OW in Melbourne, Brisbane's 4BC, 5AA in Adelaide and 6PR in Perth. And, of course, make sure you get a copy of the new Christmas gift guide. There we are. Hello. Oh, you can so find cool. it in store or look out for it in your letterbox as well. And we are in there, not just on the front cover. It's the first front cover, it's isn't a, it? It's an overload. It's, it's very exciting. You can find the perfect Christmas gifts for me, Ed. <laughs> Plus, there's lots of great fragrance ideas for him, her, alongside with a little help for those Christmas stockings, as well as hundreds of ideas for all the family. Well, stuff my stockings and stick around. <laughs> More to come right after the break. The A to Z of vitamins. We learn why folic acid is a nutrient for everyone. And she's accepted my rose of offer. Bachelor winner Anna Heinrich will be joining us next on The Sofa. See you soon back here at the House of Wellness. Welcome back to the House of Wellness. Joining us today... Yes, she rose to fame on the first Australian series of The Bachelor. Will you welcome the beautiful Anna Heinrich? Hello. Hello. Thank you Hello. for having me. I'm keen to find out about this because one of my really good friends met his wife on Farmer Wants a Wife. Oh. Just had their third baby. It's a Cinderella wow. story. Wow. But for us as friends watching our mate on TV finding love, it was just really uncomfortable. What did your <laughs> friends say? I felt uncomfortable watching. I hated I cringed. Mm. Every time I saw myself, I was like, mm, what is that? Oh my god, like me kissing him, everything. I love I the red lipstick on the first time. I, I was like, I love her. She's got a win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, <gasps> you guys are incredibly fitspo. Yes. Do you feel this pressure to stay active or do you just love it? Is it a part of the lifestyle? It's become a part of my lifestyle. I moved in with Tim, I think it's about three years ago. So I was living at home with my mum. So she was cooking. Absolutely everything. We had three course meal every, every <laughs> night. I was like, Mom, okay, stop cooking. So as soon as I kind of moved in with Tim, it just kind of became a part of my lifestyle. And I don't, it doesn't like stress me out where I'm like, I have to, I have to train every day. I have to do it. Um, I just think when it becomes a part of your lifestyle and your partner is, is as fit as he is because yeah. like, he's just intense. But um, I don't know, we just do a lot of active things as well. So it's like we go rock climbing, we play tennis, we do just sort of everything and that's just like our everyday life. Wow. So it's not... Everything yeah. except dessert, I reckon. By the no, we actually guys. eat a lot of dessert too. Oh, no. Yeah, no, we do. Yes, we do. That's lots like of how... cake, lots of chocolate. Yeah, I love it. Um, Obviously, hope for me. Yeah. Yeah. Development. <laughs> Assume the position. There's, I see the rock. This is great. Yes. Congrats. Yes. Oh, do you know, coming here, I was in the uh, car and I was like, oh, it's a bit dirty. I better take it off quickly. I'll like spit it on it or do something or wipe it. <laughs> and I dropped it down um, where the seatbelt buckle is and I couldn't find it. My hand was going red and I was like shoving oh. my hand right down there. I was stressing out. Oh, no. So 
so I'm fine now. Yeah, I'm don't fine. lose that ring, honey. I know. Oh, oh, my gosh, you would have killed me. Now, with your beautiful smile, is there no better match made in heaven <laughs> with your Rolls Ambassador for Oral B yes. toothbrushes and products? Is yes, the... yes, and you can see them all here. Yeah. So um, I've been the Oral B Ambassador for this is the third year now. Oh, so, yeah, the longest standing ambassador for Oral B, which is <laughs> such a great honour. But the new product here is the new rose gold toothbrush. Okay. Do you I, want I'm going to take this, not you. This Maybe. is probably, like, more girly, but, like, guys can have it as well. But Tim, my partner, has the black one. Your so Yeah, my fiancé. I know. I never know <gasps> what to say. I'm like, partner, fiancé, boyfriend. I, I should call him my uh, fiancé. But this toothbrush is the most intelligent toothbrush in the world. Whoa. And when I signed up, I was like, really? Are you sure? Is it really? But it is. It's so, like... Everything about it. Um, it's got six different modes. It's got whitening brush, whitening mode. Um, it basically is a genius, exactly, exactly as it like says it. here. And these so, are the kind of complementary products. Yes. For so it. this is sort of the whole Oral B 3D white range. Um, these strips, if you've ever used whitening strips, are the best. Honestly, as <laughs> soon as you use them, you won't go back. So okay. before I go out to an event Did or any, I put one on for you an have hour. Very white teeth. Well. I, Thanks to our red <laughs> And is there not an app with this so you can yes. map how you've been brushing and following so, that? This is awesome. Yeah, there Great is point. an app and basically um, it also has sensor detection, pressure detection, so it tells you where you've cleaned your teeth and where you've missed. So wow. you're meant to divide wow. your teeth up into quadrants. So you're meant to, I, I know, it's all very technical, but it. 30 seconds in each quadrant. And apparently only, I think it's approximately 47 seconds people brush their teeth for. I was like going to say, I'd probably do a 30 second I know. Around. Mm -hmm. But then you kind of feel bad because it kind of it's got a timer on here, so it kind of tells you every thirty seconds, and it kind of does this buzzing like beeping thing. Yes. So um, yeah, it's very so, very intelligent. Another Christmas one. present. Thank We're getting the buzzy. Most intelligent thing. thing in our household. Yeah. Good luck with wedding planning. Um, <laughs> Thank you. You'll be smiling beautifully on the date. Lovely Thank to meet you. you. Thanks, Thank Anna. you. Uh, stay with us after the break on the A to Z of vitamins. What folic acid can do for you? Welcome back. A to Z of vitamins time now. Gerald is back with us for my baby brain. You sit this one out. <laughs> the importance of folic acid we haven't looked at before. Really underestimated, Ed, because there are two important aspects about folic acid or folate. It can be depleted by a number of medications. It's really important in pregnancy, by the way. Mm. And the other thing is there are many people who have a genetic issue in processing folate. Okay. Now, it's involved in neurotransmitters, so mental health and energy and all these things. Very important. OK, good one to flag. And now, just following up on the acne yes, story, yes. any kind of supplements we can help support that? Yes, look, and it's it's just because you're a little older, you still, because of hormones, have some issues. Zinc is the classic, but don't mm. tolerate it. Go and do something about it. Great. Alrighty. Quick final caller standing by on the line is Laura. She's in Strathfield. Hello. What do you do for flea bites? For flea bites? Get rid of the dog. Uh, yes. We'll get rid of the fleas. Very important, Laura. Spaniels out. Um, yes, spaniels out. Um, if, they're, if they're bites, you can use either lavender oil, just dab it on, oh. works beautifully, or hydrocortisone ointment, which you can rub on, and that takes the itch away straight away. Okay. But Check the fleas are the problem. See if your nose is nice and cold. Uh, okay, before we go, uh, big thanks to everyone who's appeared on the show today. Lovely to have your company. And a big thanks, of course, to our friends at Chemist Warehouse 2 for getting behind us here at the House of Wellness. Enjoy your week. We will see you all next time. Bye, Jackie. Bye. Bye.